Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and this little Facebook question on creating set profiles like this. For your experienced user this looks like super simple and it is, uh, but if you're a new user it can be a bit confusing on how to make uh, this for you. I have split them up to components just to get the coloring a bit easier to see. And let's see if I have understood the question correctly, first of all, from what I read in the question. This is supposed to hold a flap, something like this, that can slide up and down like this. And then we need the set profiles around here. It's going to hide this again. Uh, have, it has the same profile all the way around. And then it's corner mitered by 45 degrees here. I do not know the manufacturing method. If I'm going to guess 3D printing, we need to do maybe some discussion about that. Yeah, let's do that. These two parts are mirrored, are quite easy to print. You can print them easy, so relative, of course. You can print them standing up on this edge here. This is a bit more complicated if we hide the, what are we, those two components. This is a bit harder to free the print because you get a lot of overhangs. You can do a chamfer here or something, or you can split this in two parts and print them standing up. That's up to you. Let's not talk about too much about manufacturing. Let's talk about modeling. Uh, as I said, uh, the same profile all the way around the body, and we have like this U shape here. So the workflow, we can do extrudes, yes we can do, but if we have a profile that follows along something like this, that follows a path, uh, we're going to do create sweep, sweeps a scratch profile or planar face along a selected path. So that's the tool we're going to use for creating the base body. The base body is going to be the full U shape, and then we can split it. So, I have a new design here, and oh uh, yeah, we're going to sweep, sweep needs two things, let's go back to our model, it needs a profile and it needs a path, and when we create sweeps, uh, we prefer to start with the path, and the path in this case, let's hide this, the interesting path is of course the outside of this flap, because this has a known dimension, we want to use that dimension in our design. So, let's go to a new design. We create a new sketch, We're going to sketch it from the front. So looking at it from the front, it's up to you, which direction you want to do it. And we're going to need uh, three lines. Here's a bit of a stupid way to make a U. We're going to make a rectangle like that with no dimension. Hit escape and simply delete the top line. Delete the top line. That's one way to make a U shape without needing to sketch your lines. Now we're going to add some constraints. You notice I just made it uh, out in the white area, not close to the midpoint or anything. The two sides here are going to be equal, so let's use equal. I want to constrain things to the origin point somehow, and the most logical way is because it's a symmetric part. We're going to make that here between this line. I'm going to use midpoint between this line and the origin point. Open up a sketch and have a look. We still do not have full defined sketch because we have not added any dimension. We can move things around. So let's start by dimension here. So this dimension we're adding here and here is going to be, let's go back here. It's going to be the width of our path that's from this face to this face of a flap. So this here, D for dimension, let's make it 150. I do not know the dimension, so let's make them up. We still do not have a fully defined sketch because we have not defined the height of this. We have turned black, but we have white dots, dots up here telling us the endpoints on a fully constrained dimension. This here, and let's make them 80 millimeters. And we have a fully defined sketch, we're going to finish sketch. With a small accommodation, if you want to keep your uh, uh, designs uh, organized, we should really create a component for this, that's up to you, that's another discussion. Right click, uh, rename and call this path, so we know this is a path sketch. The second thing we're going to do now, let's go back here, let's pick up one of our components, is sketching the profile, looking at it straight from the edge, like this, we're going to have a said profile. A very, very useful profile. We're going to create a sketch. We're going to create it on a perpendicular plane to our path, and that's of course our uh, ZY plane here. Or looking from the right, or you can look from the left, it's up to you. Uh, we're going to sketch the profiles. We can hide the first sketch now. We have the point here. We know that the path is going through the radian point here, so that is going to be one of the corners of our sketch. So we can you can choose to start it locked to the origin point or a bit away, that's up to you. I think we're going to do it a bit away and then use constraints to lock it down. So we're going to start by doing a line down. 
goes slightly over, it goes up, it's good over, it goes up. I try to get uh, the auto constraints. You can see I try to get things perpendicular as I make them. And when I go down here, I can do a help. I move over to this point, move it to the left. You can see it snaps in. You get that dotted line, and that makes everything perpendicular. A bit easier to move around. Escape to turn off the line tool. First of all, of course, I want to constrain it to the radian points. I'm going to do a coincident constraint, and this, this corner is going to be here, locked to the path. Uh, now we come down to dimensioning things. So let's dimension this here. I'm going to make that 5. I have auto scaling of sketch set in my preferences, so it auto scales down things. We could use equal constraints if we want to make things equal, or we can do dimension them because then we can go back and change things. So I'm going to make this here. But for now, I want to use the same dimension. So I did mention the two lines. I'm going to click out here. I want to use the same dimension below. I could type it in, but it's much easier to just click on the dimension. And it picks up the name from the dimension. Dimension up here. Of course, once again, we could type it in, or we're just going to pick up this dimension. This means we can go back and change the dimensions. So far, the next important dimension for me is the dimension of this line here. This line here is, uh, that's going to be, you can see it here, that's the thickness of the flap, um, plus some clearance, of course. You do not forget clearances. Uh, dimension this, let's make it um, 12 millimeter, a bit thicker this time. Uh, we still do not have a fully constrained sketch because we're not defined this length or this length. This length here, we can dimension, I would dimension this on the inside here. This tells me how much it covers the flap on the inside. Let's do the 10 millimeters. And then, of course, we have this part here where we're going to do some mountings hole or something, I suspect, because you want to lock things down. Let's make that 15. Of course, we can make the dimension equals or whatever way we want to do them. And I'm going to finish sketch. Turn on my path again. And, of course, we're going to get good uses and rename this sketch here. Rename. Profile set. That's our set profile. And we have this here. So let's go create sweep. The profile we want is this profile here. And the path is going to be this. I have chain selection also. It goes to be select all the paths of the path. If it doesn't do that, you have to select the individual lines. And you can see we have created the full body here. We are still not body because we had no bodies in browser because it was created yet until we hit OK. So, new body, yes, okay. My sketches doesn't disappear or hide because I have turned off auto hide and preferences. I have a lot of preferences set in Fusion. So I'm now gonna hide this. So we have made, a, let's open our browser, our single body here. I can change the color, I want to do that. I'm using component coloring, that's why it's a bit of bright colors. So the next part we're gonna do, we're gonna do the mitering of the corners. We could do a lot of math and things, but we simply could use our model. So we're going to create a sketch. Uh, we could create a sketch on a face of a body, but the problem is if we, for some reason, edit the body or lose or something, we might lose the, pref uh, the reference for the sketch of a sketch plane. So we simply try to keep your sketch on the region plane. So we're going to select this. We're going to do P for project, and we're simply going to project in this. Here. You can see it can project in faces, edges, and so forth. But I'm going to move it so we see the little small dots. This dot. This dot, this dot, and this dot, hit OK. And better visibility, simply hide the body, line tool, and connect our little lines. Finish line, new line, new line over here, gonna finish line, and gonna finish sketch, and turn visibility off of the body, or not, turn the visibility on for the body. So, this is what we have in front of us, and now we're going to split the body. So we're going to do split body, select the body. We have one single body. Splitting tool is going to be, I'm going to turn on around the body, but easier to click on the lines. It's going to be this line. You can see it flaps away uh, because it extends splitting tools, try to split as much as possible. But when I select the second line, Fusion is nice enough to know that we will not want, we do not want our uh, splitting tools to intersect. So it's going to move them down like this. So we have two splitting tools and one body, and we're going to hit OK. And you can see in our browser, I'm going to hide the sketch, but suddenly we have three bodies. We have this body here, this body here, and the bottom body. 
and of course we can turn on our uh, sketches here and we can edit sketch or we can simply right click on here and say tell it to show dimensions we can now from here say let's say okay that was wrong it was supposed to be 140 and that was supposed to be 100 we can change uh, the dimension of our part without needing to redo everything can do the same uh, with this show dimensions so let's say we want to change uh, this here because we wanted to have it 20 millimeters there's no problem go back to 12 we can also change uh, you might want this to cover the part more of the flap more we want 20 millimeters here no problem of course we cannot change it so far that the body becomes self-intersecting fusion will throw errors on that in that case and we can change oh we want it to be eight millimeters thick changing the thickness of everything because we have now put this sketch along this path it means that even if we change the thickness here to anything oops sorry, i'm gonna move the dimension over to this side this inside edge here will not uh change its size so we always always fit the flap we have we are only changing to mention outwards from this origin point so that's a bit of planning when you do things and if it goes wrong just edit the sketches and change things you will learn as you go along so that was bit little i'm gonna change the name of that to cut profile that's our cut profile and name things we can name the bodies too and create component and now export them like meshes and of course you might want to think of you want to 3d printing this we have to do some thinking on how you 3d print this in the best way i hope you learned something people and i hope to see you around again so take care see you around and goodbye